the favorite thing I learned about the gospel when I was converting and the favorite thing I've ever learned about the gospel to this day is that we jumped for joy at the chance to come to earth and that we rejoiced in that opportunity and that we knew all that we would face but we rejoiced in knowing that we would have the chance to come to earth, to have a body, to gain experience. And we knew that we would have hard times and trials, but we knew that we would be able to make it through. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Saints Unscripted. Today we have um, probably one of my favorite things that we do on the show, which is uh, conversion stories. Just hearing people coming to the gospel, finding themselves, and and it, just everyone's experience is so unique. We've got super special guests all the way from our neighbors, the Canadians, the nicest people on the planet. Uh, we've got Taylor. How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. How are you? Good. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Um, well, thanks so much for taking the time to come on the show. Um, yeah, so I know a little bit about your story and the audience knows nothing. How, how old are you right now? I'm 23, just turned 23. Cool. And so this story starts, I mean, I guess you said like from being little, you didn't really grow up like that religious, you were saying? Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't, I went to church, like a United Church till I was four. My brother was born when I was four and we stopped going, but obviously I don't remember anything. Right, <laughs> right. And so then we never really talked about God ever in my house and, um, it was never introduced to us at all. So I really, I didn't really believe in God, but I did not believe in God. Sure. I just didn't like think about it at all or like yeah. contemplate it. And then when I was 16, um, I have relatives in Alberta and they were members. Um, and but I didn't really know them. They were strangers to me my whole life because they lived so far away. Where, so but, where did you grow up like distance wise? I grew up in BC near Vancouver. Okay. And then my, my, relatives live about 12 hour drive away yeah Alberta. it's like the opposite end of yeah. gotcha so we never really saw them um but right after my grade 11 year uh, my school counselor was like I was having a really hard time and she was like why don't you break up the summer a bit and go see your relatives in Alberta and I was like heck no <laughs> because <laughs> I was like really really shy and I didn't yeah. want to stay with strangers well, yeah but, like why what, that would yeah. be the scariest thing I feel like yeah but something like prompted me, which now I realize was the spirit <laughs> yeah. to like go. And I remember telling my dad I wanted to go because it's like his brother. And he like looked at me like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like you've never talked about this before. Yeah. Oh, that, that was so out of character for me. I was like, that's a great idea. But like, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not sure at all, but I think it's what I got to do. <laughs> yeah. I never would have done that if I were in your shoes. That would have no, been so I was, scary to I was, me. I floored myself. Like yeah. I was shocked that I was doing it. When I got on the plane, I was like, what am I doing? Yeah. Pretty terrified, but I went. I was supposed to stay for like two weeks. Cool. But then I ended up staying for the whole summer. <laughs> so that means it went well. Yeah. Yeah. It went really well. <laughs> they didn't, they just kidnapped you. No, like. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So what was your experience like there with your, your uncle? The first Sunday I was there, they asked if I wanted to go to church or not. They didn't pressure me or anything. It was totally up to me. And I was like, okay, why not? Because or else I'd just stay at home. And yeah, exactly. Found it interesting enough. Yeah. <laughs> And so I went and I don't remember really how I felt. I remember I just felt really uncomfortable and like <laughs> scared and like out of, out of, it was way out of my comfort zone. I hadn't been to church since I was four. And all I did when I was four was play in the little, little right. playroom. <laughs> and so I wasn't used to like hearing these things or I just wasn't used to talking about God at all. Yeah. So it was like a strange feeling to talk about him, but like it wasn't a bad feeling. It was actually a really good feeling, just different. And so it was, I think it was the second Sunday I was there. We went to our ward. Um, and then we went to, um, a family friend's missionary homecoming where they gave their talk cool. about returning from permission. And I had no idea what a missionary was. Right. <laughs> no idea. So I turned to my cousin who I was, I stayed with my aunt and uncle for one week and my cousin to the next. Oh, fine. So I turned to my cousin and I asked like, what's a missionary? And then she was like really cheeky about it and like <laughs> sarcastically was like, well, do you want to find out? <laughs> <laughs> and I weirdly said, 
sure. <laughs> well, you're just kind of like, oh, okay. Like, <laughs> yeah, I don't even know what that means. Yeah, sure. exactly. <laughs> We're tricky then, like that. And I like, freaked out and I didn't know why she was freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I'm such a good missionary. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so we got in touch with missionaries and I was really scared at first because I, I was 16 at the time. I was a shy, scared little girl. And then having like 18, 19 year old boys come and like <laughs> talk yeah. to me about God, I was like super scared. <laughs> and I remember for the first while, like they would come over two or three times a week and wow. I didn't talk at all. Like <laughs> I just nodded, smiled or whatever. I didn't talk. And then when they'd leave, I talked to my cousin for like an hour or two after asking cool. her all my questions, all my thoughts, all my everything where with the missionaries, I never mentioned anything. <laughs> they probably terrifying. thought they're like, we're such good teachers. And yeah. You're just like, uh. Yeah. So it actually happened that a week after, so I met them in the middle of July and then a week later. So like, I remember the day, July 25th was the day I decided I wanted to be baptized. So it was like a week. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. Met them a week later. I want to be baptized. What, what, what the, the decision for you to be baptized, what do you feel like? How did you get to that so quick? Like I had like reluctantly not prayed about anything they were asking me to pray about. And okay. then it was the night before I decided I wanted to be baptized. And I was like, you know what? Maybe I'll pray. And so I said I was going to bed. And so I was just in my room and I got down on my knees. And that was the first time I'd ever gotten down on my knees to pray. Yeah. That was the first time I'd ever really said a sincere prayer in my life. Yeah. Um, there have been other times where I was like, please, God, help me, whatever. Right. But was the first time I was felt like I was actually going to talk to God. Yeah. Because now I had a better understanding of him and his love for me and that I was his child and he wanted to hear from me. And so it was the first time where I felt like I was actually going to have a conversation with God. And I remember I just like broke down in tears and I was just crying and, and talking. And I, I really had suffocated all of my emotions and feelings for my whole life. And I never talked about them because my parents, like, they divorced and that was really messy. Gotcha. And so I never had a time in my life where, like, I could talk to my mom about feelings or my dad either. You don't feel like you're unstable enough to listen. Down. Yeah. And so I, it was first when I was talking, when I was praying, I was, like, pouring my heart out for the first time in my life. And I felt like I was getting all this weight off my shoulders and I could just, like, it was, it was just an incredible experience. And but I remember I finished and my head hurt because I had been crying so much. And then I just went to bed. But then the next morning I woke up and I felt like I could breathe for the first time. And like, it, like literally, because for so long, for probably about six years prior, like I felt like my breath was like suffocated actually physically. Yeah. Like I, I had a hard time catching right. a good breath. And then that morning, I just felt like I could breathe so freely. Like I just, I could take in air and it was just like, <laughs> it was the best feeling ever. You could like let go of that anxiety that you had been. Yeah. Yeah. And so then I decided then I was like, you know what? This feels so right. Nothing's ever made me feel so good. And so I decided I wanted to be baptized. And the missionaries came over later that day and I hadn't told my cousin that or the missionaries, missionaries came over. They were like, they finally asked for the first time. So have you ever thought about baptism? And I'm like, nope. <laughs> and they're like, okay. <laughs> yeah, they're like, okay, we won't push this. Yeah. Yeah. Shut them down really hard. And then after they left, I spent about 10 to 15 minutes trying to tell my cousin that I actually had thought about it. And <laughs> I was so scared. I actually didn't know if you could be. Right. Like, I don't know where I didn't get the message that you could actually, like, it could happen. Church. Yeah. I don't know what I thought they were trying to do. <laughs> You're just like, like, they're teaching me. This is great. Yeah. But, like, I didn't, I don't know what didn't click in my brain, but I didn't think I could, like, get baptized. I didn't even know what that meant. Yeah. I talk about it. It's probably because I just never talked and shut them down so hard. <laughs> <laughs> but I finally told her, and she, like, flipped out, called the elders and everything. And then, it had calmed down, but like then, so we're just sitting on the couch that day and we're trying to watch a show. She had to keep pausing it because I couldn't stop laughing. Like I just couldn't stop laughing. And it was because I was feeling like this immense amount of joy that I had never felt in my life. Like I can honestly say that that was the first time I had felt happy in yeah. like six years. And so I was laughing so hard because it was just like this foreign feeling and I didn't know what to do with it. So I just yeah. laughed. 
<laughs> that was like my coping strategy. Right. <laughs> a foreign feeling of joy. And it was just like the most precious experience. And then I got baptized August 12th. Um, so it was about a month after I'd met the missionaries cool. and I couldn't, I wanted to get baptized right away, but I hadn't finished all the lessons. Yeah, exactly. Yet. Good. Good for the missionaries for <laughs> yeah. teaching everything first. <laughs> yeah. So you stayed with your aunt and uncle and that was probably like such a wonderful time because mm-hmm. the gospel is just so close and the, they're living it. So it's easier for you to like start it. Oh, yeah. What happens when you go home? It was really, really tough. Um, I lived with my mom and my brother pretty much full time. I saw my dad like once or twice a week. Yeah. Um, my dad was a little more supportive. My brother and my dad actually drove out for my baptism. Cute. Yeah. My mom didn't. Um, which made me sad, (laughs) but, um, to understand now why, like she, she, like, I know, like I go away, their child goes away and joins a church and comes back all religious. It's like, like, okay. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But my dad was very supportive and then my mom came a long way. But while I was there, it was really tough because I had fallen in love with the ward I was at in Alberta so much and the people, because it was like my first experience with God and with, church and with people and with like just being shown so much christ-like love and understanding what that meant and so when i went back i didn't love the ward a whole lot and right. cardston was where i was at and you might know cardston because there's, there's a temple there and oh okay it's it's like huge like it's like all the canadians settled there <laughs> it's like i'm sure i've seen a picture i'm terrible yeah, it's like it's like the yeah. canadian utah Gotcha. <laughs> that's kind of awesome. Everyone's, everyone's Latter Day Saint. So is that that's where your aunt and uncle were, or yeah, gotcha. that's where I joined So the you church. were in like you were surrounded yeah. by members. And yeah. Gotcha. And so then I go back to BC, and there's like hardly any. Gotcha. So it was really hard. Um, I didn't have my driver's license yet because I was too young, and my mom didn't really like driving me to church or anything, Dang. so I'd miss a lot of church. And um, so I went back at the end of August to. VC to start grade 12 and I lasted a semester and then about a week into my second semester of grade 12 in February I had packed up and moved to Alberta like I I had decided and then two days later I got on a plane and left crazy because <laughs> I just your... couldn't do it like yeah. I went back into like because I've struggled with my mental health and like I found so much happiness and joy when I was in Alberta learning about the church and finding God and finding myself and then going back so like my old life and yeah. like that just like really sunk me and like darkness just started to set in again and I knew now how to better like take care of myself and like right. how to prioritize my mental health and so I was like you know what I felt good there and I don't feel good here so I'm gonna go back there yeah and it was terrifying and it really hurt my parents feelings right. and I felt like they kind of failed and they didn't do enough and that right. wasn't the case but I wasn't in a place to like explain that to them right so definitely cause a bit of a divide between my family but I went and I guess I'm still here <laughs> <laughs> so we're, I just I think um, maybe we can talk just like uh, for, for a little bit before we finish about about your mental health because there's there's people who who are active members who struggle with mental health you know mm-hmm. and have had the gospel their whole life um, mm-hmm. what aspects of the gospel do you feel like have helped you out the most like what was the thing that you know because you're saying you're at home and it started to feel dark again. And and mm-hmm. I imagine when you were when you're younger and your parents just got divorced, you know, it's really hard cuz you don't you're you're little, you know, you don't have any you don't know any coping mechanisms. You don't know yeah. what's going on. But then it seems like for you to have the courage to make the decision to move back to Alberta, seems mm-hmm. like somewhere along the way you had figured out like what's going you had found some kind of like coping mechanisms or tools um what what do you think helped you have make that decision so definitely the favorite thing i learned about the gospel when i was converting and the favorite thing i've ever learned about the gospel to this day is that we jumped for joy at the chance to come to earth and that we rejoiced in that opportunity and that we knew all that we would face but we rejoiced in knowing that we would have the chance to come to earth, to have a body, to gain experience. And we knew that we would have hard times and trials, but we knew that we would be able to make it through. And when I learned that, it resonated with me so deep, and I just connected with it. 
And that was the first thing I knew that was true. I was like, what these missionaries are telling me about this, I knew it was true. And I knew that I knew that I would face these challenges, but that I would be able to overcome them. And then I would get through them. And I knew that in order to get through them, I needed God's help. Yeah. And that binded me to God. And I never, like, I have wandered and strayed, sure. but I always come back because I've always had that, like, bind towards the gospel where I, it, it saved my life. And so I could never, ever betray it yeah. because it just it saved me. And prayer has been a huge part of, like, coping with my mental health and just being able to connect to God and to feel loved by him. And then church is a huge part. Yeah. Like there's a quote that's like, you know, just hold on Sunday's coming. Yeah. That's so true. And cause it's just something about singing the hymns and hearing the talks. And sometimes something's just perfect for you. And then it reminds you that God loves you. And all those little reminders in my life that the tender mercies, the little miracles that remind me that God loves me has been huge in my healing journey. Thank you. That's one. I'm like holding back the tears. <laughs> <laughs> I just, cause I personally, um, I have a lot of like social anxiety, you know? Mm -hmm. And so going to church sometimes is really hard for me because like, I feel like there's expectations, you mm -hmm. know, and I'm like, Oh, I want to meet these expectations. And so I have a hard time focusing, but, but you're right. It's just like, God didn't send us like, he knows we can do it. Yeah. Thanks so much for yeah. taking the time to, to do this episode with us. Um, before we end, is there anything anything else you want to mention or add to your story or or or, or advice you want to give people who yeah. have maybe been in a similar situation? I think it's super cliche to say, but it truly does get better. Like, it truly does. Because I was in a point in my life where I never thought it would. They're like, I was 15. I didn't think I'd make it to 16. I didn't think I'd make it to 18. Yeah. And now I'm 23 and I'm married to the love of my life and I'm happy, like really, truly happy. And I never thought I'd get there, but I've overcome so much just really in the last year. Um, and I'm in a place where I can kind of say that I, I made it. Right. <laughs> and I know there's so many hard times ahead of me, but I'm in a place where I never thought I'd be. Yeah. Feels like I've just accomplished what I always wanted to accomplish and mm. it does get better and sometimes time just heals wounds and sometimes therapy heals yeah. wounds yeah. often God will heal wounds when it's time and obviously effort is important right. but you don't need much effort before God will step in and, and heal those wounds for you when it's time when it's right for you because he knows what we need to learn from experiences and he knows what's important and he knows the life lessons that are vital to our survival and our eternal achievement and internal life and i think that is so important to just know that he's got your back yeah and even when you stray and even when you turn your back on him he will never ever turn your back turn his back on you awesome thank you so much Thank you, Saints and Scripters, or Scripties. I don't, we don't really figure that out, but thank you for watching the show. Thank, um, thank you, Taylor, for taking the time to share your experience. So if you guys want to like reach out to Taylor, you could check her out on her Instagram, which is Taylor underscore L underscore Campbell, and, and you could see more about um, her experience. And, and then as always, please uh, like this video comment um and and subscribe for for all the future stuff to come thank you so much guys for watching and thank you taylor and we'll talk to you later thank you